Good afternoon, guys. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. I'm standing inside my shop today, and as you can see behind me, we've got my mini excavator here. This right here is approximately a mid-90s Takuchi TB15. I say mid-90s because I don't exactly know the year. If you guys do, please let me know down below in the comments. Now, this machine, as I said, is new to me over the last few episodes. I've gone through, done some fluid changes, filter changes, adjustments, a little bit of repair here and there, grease things up just to make sure it was fully functioning. I've even had a chance to get it outside and play around with the controls, and you guys have probably gotten a good laugh out of that as I'm not that great at it yet. What I'm doing today is I'm here in the shop so that I can work on adding this right here. This is a manual thumb. This thumb will allow for increased versatility, if you will, because it'll allow me to pick up things like logs. So with the ability to pick up logs, I'll be able to use this mini excavator out in the woods in order to do some of my loading of logs, maybe on the log deck or maybe even on the sawmill. But I think having that thumb is gonna be a very important thing to allow this to be used in more applications. I can also go around and I can pick up things like rocks, I could pick up brush, um, and uh, you know, just add to the overall usability of this thing, so it can't hurt. I've got this behind me, which is a 24 inch manual thumb. So 24 inches here, and it's got an adjustable brace. And you guys can see the holes here where the pins can be adjusted to. What that's gonna allow for is this to go up in different positions. Now what I'm doing with the wood right here is more or less figuring out the spacing between the bucket and the bottom of this, uh, this thumb here. So right now we've got about a six inch space and I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to leave it at that six inches or whether I'm going to drop it down at all. But that's sort of where we're starting at. And I'm just getting, getting a bit of a look at it. You'll also notice that the edge of the bucket, you see the teeth there? It's actually shorter than the length of the thumb. This is a 24 inch unit, 24 inch thumb. I could have gotten away with probably an 18 inch thumb, which this company also sells. Once I get this welded into place, I'm going to end up cutting this where it more or less fits best with the edge of the bucket. So I'm probably going to take off about four inches of this. Not, uh, not that much. Anyways, this brand here, if you're interested, I'll put the details in the description below. This is made by a company called Vivor, uh, V-E-V-O-R. Uh, it looks to be pretty stout, so I'm pretty happy with it so far. We'll see how it performs. There's a variety of different manual thumbs you guys can buy, so lots of options out there. This one was just priced right. And I thought, ah, oh, what the heck, we'll see how it works. Some of you guys will probably wonder why I didn't get a hydraulically powered thumb, one where there's a cylinder with uh, a switch or some sort of lever up at the controls, which would allow the thumb to come down at will. I figured I would put the manual thumb on, we'll see how it works, and then that'll give me time to get the hydraulics figured out. Uh, and that will also give me time to make sure everything is working as it should. Um, then I'll get that hydraulic thumb if I think this is not quite living up to my expectations. I figure I could always retrofit this. I could add an additional mount up here and then have the cylinder come down and then use the existing uh, thumb itself. So it won't be a complete loss, but uh, we'll see how this one works out. I still have a lot of work ahead of me, so that's the focus. Guys, welcome back, here we go.
you only get one shot at the layout so I'm trying to get it as right as I can I just tacked it in place there very very lightly and uh, just making sure everything lines up making sure the middle of this piece lines up with the middle of the tooth I think we're pretty good what do you guys think this is the time if it's gonna be off I need to fix it now keep in mind I'm gonna be cutting this right I want to make sure it's welded in place before I cut that to length probably gonna end up taking off I don't know about that much but I'm thinking that'll work you guys can see the spacing there I think that'll grab a log nicely forgot definitely want to protect those cylinders All right, guys, well, one thing is for certain, I'm gonna be a better grinder than a welder, or at least a better grinder first than a welder. I've gotten it on there and it's definitely firm, but it doesn't look that great. And I think the reason is I have trouble welding going uphill. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the battery again. 
uh, it's currently disconnected. So I'm going to attach the battery. I'm going to straighten out the boom and I'm going to lay it as flat as possible. And then I'll run my final bead on both sides. Currently, I think it is nice and strong and well, it looks pretty good from about 10 feet and I don't think we're going to get any closer yet until I run that final bead. So we'll get her hooked up. I just hope that's the right spot because if it's not, well, it's staying there. Anyways, here we go. Alright guys, this is where we're at. I got the welding done. At least I think I got the welding done. That's the best of my ability at this point. It was difficult for me to weld uh, going uphill. I probably could have made it a bit more horizontal off the, uh, off the start, but you saw me do it near the end and it allowed me to put a few more passes on each side. So we're going to leave that weld for now. Uh, what, what I've just done is I moved the uh, boom, obviously, so that I can put the teeth right up to where it's going to contact the actual, uh, the actual thumb here. I'm gonna make a little mark here so I know where to cut, and then I'm gonna come along with my uh, my cutoff disc and my, my grinder. We'll cut off that part of the, the thumb, and I think we'll then be good to go try it. Now, one thing I've sort of been contemplating here is my bucket's got these side cutters on them. I was thinking about cutting this right off, but I think what I'll do, I'll leave it on for now, and that way we can try it out. Uh, if I decide it needs to come off, I'll cut it off. I'm probably gonna be doing more thumb work than I will digging but who knows what the future brings. The reason I was thinking about getting rid of these side cutters is if I cut it off here, uh, basically a log can sit right in this area. It'll be sort of trapped in by the teeth, as opposed to if I leave the side cutters, the log's gonna have to sit up here. So we'll try it out, we'll see what happens. For now, we'll leave it. But that's what we're up against. All right, guys, there's the finished product. You can see we cut about five and a half inches of the uh, thumb off and I've ground it down so it's smooth enough at this point. I'm gonna have to come back and touch it up with a bit of primer, but it's pretty cold today, so I'll wait just a bit for that. Prime that and I'll also put some primer and ultimately some paint on the welds. But this is what we're left with. You guys can see it hangs out just a little bit past the teeth. And the reason is if I ever replace the teeth there, I wanna make sure that it doesn't come out past the thumb. Now, if I have to adjust it at all, I can still do that. But I think for a starting point, that looks pretty good. We made our way out here to the wood pile. What I'm going to do, I want to try it out and see exactly what this is all about. Now, this will be my very first time using a thumb on a mini excavator. And as you guys know, if you've been around the channel, this is my very first mini excavator. So I'm going to be uh, learning a few things here. I'm going to take it nice and slow. The ground is pretty frozen. I got a spot where there's no ice, so I think we'll be all right there. It's downhill a little bit, not ideal, but there's not really a flat area around here, so this will have to do. Three logs here. These are all hardwood logs. In fact, these are logs that I'll cut up to make firewood. I'll be doing that another day. I've got a piece of cherry here. It looks like hard maple and a piece of oak here and uh, various lengths. So we'll pick it up. At least we'll try to pick it up. I know my tractor picks this up with ease, but my tractor picks up quite a bit more than the mini excavator does. Just uh, one recap there, that is a uh, 1.2 ton machine. Uh, what is it? So it comes out around uh, 2,500 pounds, give or take, but I know it doesn't lift that much. I think it lifts like 1,500 pounds, but I don't, don't quite remember. We'll see today. So that's what we're up against. Here we go.
guys done laughing yet? That was a bit of an episode there. You saw me playing around with the controls on the mini excavator here, trying to make sure I knew what was gonna happen with what control before I picked up the log. So didn't exactly have it down pat, but I think with a bit of practice off camera, I'll have it better in the future, but worked out pretty well. I got the logs picked up. I just wanted to get a feel for the weight, get a feel for the machine. I wanted to figure out what the capabilities were of the machine. Definitely not pushing them, but just feeling the capabilities for now. That way I can continue to get practice, continue to get uh, a bit more experience before I start uh, start loading things and lifting logs over things like my wood splitter or the, the sawmill. I'd hate to drop one of these logs on something because I'm not experienced yet. This machine, I definitely found its capabilities very early on. When I had the log and it was too far away from the machine, well, I lifted the blade here and sure enough, it wanted to do one of those, take, take a, no, a nose dive. So I had to remember that when I get the weight lifted, if I wanna move it and I wanna lift the blade, I gotta bring that log in nice and close to the machine. Otherwise, because this machine is relatively light, it's gonna wanna seesaw. I'm used to using my tractor. My tractor probably weighs the better part of 5,000 pounds. It's got uh, rear filled tires. I got an implement on the back generally. And so I go to this machine, which is like half the weight. Well, I end up feeling it. Not to mention, if you look at the, uh, the wheelbase there, I realize these aren't wheels, but the wheelbase on the tractor compared to the, the length of the tracks, the tractor is quite a bit longer. Although I guess the weight is also quite far out. But anyways, ended up having to bring the logs in nice and close so that we didn't tip. And uh, one other thing to note is I got to be on the ball with that blade. If I were to try to lift something and have that blade up, well, the second I take the weight up, it starts to tip again. So I got to pay special attention to that. That'll go into my practice book that I continue to work on. But overall, I'm quite happy. I lifted a variety of logs here. You guys can see I lifted this cherry. Uh, no problem there. Came over to this thing. This thing's quite a bit bigger, I would say. That's probably a good uh, maybe 13 inches there. And then on this end, uh, you know, branches off. But likewise, it lifted it quite easily. Uh, this one, same thing. One thing I did notice, and you guys might have seen as well, when I got this thing up away from the machine, I actually got it too high. And um, my brain kicked into gear and realized very quickly I had to bring it down, especially because if I didn't bring it down, it would uh, make it a bit precarious and want to tip. So I had to pay attention to that one, but overall quite happy. This thing right here, so my Viva 24 inch uh, thumb here, I think they call it a backhoe thumb on the, uh, on the website. This thing's turned out quite well. It's in a really good position I'm finding. Uh, I can pick up things far away. I can also pick up things relatively close to the machine. And it didn't seem like it was flexing. It didn't seem like it was uh, flimsy. It felt pretty solid. And so I'm quite happy with it right from the start. When I was clamping onto these logs, I was putting as much torque on that log with my joystick there as the bucket would give it. So it didn't uh, seem like it was gonna break off or twist or any of that. And so, uh, so far so good. So looking forward to trying this thing in the future on different settings. As you guys can see, I can bump it up two more settings so that this starts off a bit higher. Might end up doing that for even bigger stuff, bigger logs, maybe some brush. But uh, the lower setting there worked quite well even for this guy here, as I said. So all in all, so far, so good. All right, guys. Well, I can tell you one thing. That thumb is going to be very valuable on this mini excavator. In hindsight, the likelihood of me being able to do a lot of log work without it is pretty slim. I could probably weld a hook onto that bucket and run a chain around these logs, but having the thumb allows for a bit more control, I think. And as I get a bit more experience using that thumb, with the Mini X, I think it'll be even uh, even more valuable for me. So thank you to those of you who reminded me of that versatility. What I'm going to do next is I'm probably going to be out here figuring out some jobs I can do with that thing. One of them is going to be lifting these logs up so I can cut them into rounds without having to dig my uh, chainsaw down into the dirt. The other reason lifting these logs up to cut them into rounds will be nice is I don't have to bend over to do that. I'll probably also head out to the sawmill. I'll use the mini X here with the thumb to load some logs onto the log deck, maybe move some slab wood off the uh, sawmill area, maybe into a trailer. And then I'm gonna head into some trails. I got some trails I wanna clean up. And that thing's gonna be great for picking up brush. It's gonna be great for picking up logs, moving them out of the way. And so uh, overall, it's been a great day. The welds have held up for now. Throw a bit of primer on there and hey, I'll be uh, back in action. Guys, thanks very much for watching. Make sure you tune in next time. I'm sure I'll be up to something, whether it's uh, 
playing around with this, sawing some wood, maybe splitting some wood, who knows. Appreciate all the support out there. If you haven't done so already, please give her the old like, Subscribe, and I'll see you next time.